So next I'll talk about the LFO. I've reinitialized the patch, so now we're back at our sine wave. And um, the LFO on this is actually quite a useful um, modulation device, separate from the envelope generator. And it's global, so it affects um, all the operators in the same way. Um, we have four wave options. The controls for it are right up here, A7 through uh, 12, but um, what we have to do is globally, we actually have to look, before we can check out the LFO controls, we actually have to go to this section over here, uh, modulation sensitivity. And this gives us the um, maximum amounts of modulation we can use for the whole instrument. So if we go to pitch, uh, our pitch modulation sensitivity has uh, a rate from zero to seven, seven being the maximum, obviously. And um, right here, amplitude from zero to three. And even though the uh, pitch modulation is global for all the operators. The amplitude modulation actually um, is set per operator, and this can actually be this can be very fairly confusing because what you see is we have our our typical um, operator on off ones and zeros up here. As soon as we go into the amplitude modulation sensitivity, it gives us another set of numbers, and this is kind of alluded to right here in the control AMS on off. And what we can do is we can turn on and off amplitude modulation per operator. So I'll just set them all on for now, and if I need to turn them off, we can do that. And I'll set this, this is zero to three, I'll set that to the maximum amplitude modulation. Um, I think the EG bias has to do with um, external controls, I think the breath controller, and uh, right now I don't have that, so I won't focus on that. Anyway, uh, if we go back to the LFO, we can go to the wave, it's set at uh, triangle, and what we can do is um, to, let's say we wanted to add pitch modulation. So we're gonna go to our uh, pitch modulation depth, which is uh, initial modulation depth at uh, A10. And we can bring that in. And go from a fairly vibrato-like modulation to something very intense. The other waveforms we have are um, a sawtooth wave going up, so here I'll actually slow that down. Oh, slow that down so you can see it. So we have speed control. I'll I'll get to it in just, just a second, and we'll turn the so that's sawtooth wave going up. We have a square wave. These controls function in real time, um, and a uh, some kind of sample and hold of uh, maybe a, like a digital noise or something. So it's giving us random values. Um, okay, so those are our four LFO waveforms. Speed is fairly um, there's a wide range. It goes into I would say pretty moderate audio range, so you can actually hear some of the noise. If we go to a triangle wave and bring in the modulation, the speed up, we can even get some low rate FM. Um, so that's our pitch modulation, which just modulates the frequency, and the amplitude modulation uh, will modulate the amplitude. So bring that in. We can do this with a square wave, maybe, and turn up the speed.
And this can be set per operator, so it could be very useful to have a modulator, for instance, um, having amplitude modulation, but having your note uh, static. We can actually, I'll try that for a second. So we'll turn on, um, we already have a second operator on, but I'll go to the output level for it. And if I turn that up and we'll apply, go back in, going back to the modulation sensitivity, I'll turn off the amplitude modulation for everything but operator two. And um, we can set that to, I guess, let's do triangle wave at a fairly slow speed or moderate speed. And um, let's see if it's up right now. Yeah. So now we can hear the amplitude modulation of operator two acting as a uh, timbral change for uh, it modulating operator one. We can change the speed of that. And by bumping up the output level for operator two, we can change the intensity of that. So operator one is just giving our sine wave and then operator uh, two is modulating, is being modulated with the am amplitude modulation of from the LFO. Um, lastly, or second to last, we have a delay on the LFO. This actually doesn't affect the amplitude modulation. So um, if I go to delay and turn that up, there's no delay on it. But, so I'll turn amplitude modulation depth down and turn pitch modulation depth up. It will delay the pitch modulation, which is very useful for vibrato, delaying vibrato-like effects, or that's like a typical um, use for it. So if we, I don't know what it's set at right now, we have pitch modulation up, um, and if you hold this, I'll turn off operator two, three, and four, so we can really hear this or see it. It's a pretty long delay, and that's only halfway through the range, so I think something more moderate. We can make it less. And this is like a something that you almost always do with the mod wheel anyway, but you can program it into the patch. And lastly, we have uh, sync synchronization. So you can actually sync synchronize the LFO cycle, uh, the phase of it, with key press. So. Um, maybe this is be easier, easiest to see with um, uh, a fairly slow wave. And let's turn the synchronization on for a second and put the modulation up all the way. Oh, let me take the delay off. So notice that it's always rising in pitch as we make the key press. If I turn synchronization off, this will just make it so that's a f kind of free roaming LFO, and we can sometimes we'll hear it uh, modulating the pitch going up. Sometimes it'll be modulating down, depending on when in the cycle we press the key. So you can see there's a variety of um, changes depending on when we press the key. Um, yeah, so that's it for the LFO, but it's a fairly useful, um, fully featured LFO, I think.